It's a great warmish day to be doing a little cleanup work and getting things ready for spring. So I have three goals for next spring in the cutting garden. I need more flowers over the course of a longer season, making sure that I have flowers blooming from spring all the way through to fall. Number two is starting things more directly from seed. And that's a big thing in the ground. I have always relied on my greenhouse for the last few years. I'm running out of room often in the greenhouse. So I want to direct sow more things in this garden. That brings us to goal number three. I'm gonna to need to use some season extenders. And that is something I haven't done over here. Today, I'm gonna to get things cleaned up and tidied up and start to lay the groundwork for next spring. Let me give you a tour of the garden. So technically, the cutting garden starts over here. And I have three raised beds along here and some pots. There are roses, climbing roses, that go up each of these trellises. And then there is a variety of other perennials in each of these beds. This fall, I added some more perennial salvias to these beds. And my hope is that next spring, these are gonna be really beautiful. This is also slightly shaded. We have these sunshades hung here that helps keep this area from really baking in the sun. This can get very, very hot in the peak of the summer. So there are actually three raised beds along here, also planted out with roses and salvia, but it's these six beds in the middle. This is where I grow peonies. I have roses in here. And you can see I grew a lot of apple of Peru in here. It does beautifully, but I kind of let it get a little out of control this year. So I need to take out all of that. Those are all seed heads that eventually will create new plants next year if I'm not careful. I also have some baby fruit trees in here. I use this as an extension of my orchard. So I have an apple tree here and here, one in each of the two square beds. And those apple trees have done really well. We have tool storage beyond, and right now everything's been pulled down. We're going to put up new hooks for those tools to hang against the um, shed back there, but I haven't gotten all of those installed yet. So it's a little wild and woolly. One of the other things you'll notice is that there is cardboard down on all of the paths here. We're going to put down better paths in between the gravel that has been there. For now, the cardboard is doing its job and um, it kept the weeds down over the late part of the summer and early fall. For the winter, we have to wrap our trees here um, in the first maybe three years of their lives and so it's wrapped and ready to go for winter. Here we have this hollyhock still looking green and lovely um, but it is a bad place for a hollyhock to be so I'm gonna have to dig that up and do my best to you can't really relocate hollyhock so I'm gonna take it out and then I have roses here which I planted bare root roses last spring they were fantastic over the summer and so I need to give them some winter protection so that's another thing I'll be working on today um, and just kind of cleaning up and making this tidier. So there's a lot of work ahead. Let's get to it. So one of the first things I'm going to do is clear out this apple of Peru. Apple of Peru is a South American plant. It's really a great filler in bouquets. That's how I use it. It is huge and kind of lovely and gives almost a tropical feel even though it's pretty drought tolerant. It doesn't take a lot of water. And then after a freeze, you get these gorgeous lantern type seed heads. So I'm not going to just compost this. I don't see a lot of birds eating these seeds. I really watch for that and I would leave them if I saw birds eating them, but I really don't. So we're going to take these down um, and that'll help clear some space. Of course though, I'm gonna leave the roots in the ground because that helps add biomass to 
the soil, and that's really important. So let's get these cleared out. So maybe you're one of those people who gets a little stressed out by an untidy fall and winter garden. But this little area, which just has a couple of perennials that went to seed, these were young plants that they went to seed um, over the, for the fall. Just a week or so ago, this area was covered with birds and they were taking the seeds off of these heat seed heads. It looks untidy maybe. If it's anything that's native, I wouldn't be cleaning up the apple of Peru, except that, like I said before, I don't ever see anything eating those seeds. But these, I'm gonna leave until spring and then I'll cut them back because I know that those little finches and other birds need that seed. And most of these seed heads are pretty stripped, but not entirely. There is still seed there, so I'm gonna leave it. Okay, so another task on my list is to take off the rabbit fence on this bed right behind me here. We put that up to keep rabbits out of the lettuces, and it was very successful. But now that I don't grow vegetables over here, it just is in the way. It makes it harder to plant in that bed, so I'm gonna take it down. So that job is done, and now I'm going to cut down these stems over here. So this was the first time I'd ever grown amaranth, and I didn't really realize how tall it was going to get. So next year I'm going to move it to another part of my garden, but it's fantastic filler in bouquets. I used it all summer long in bouquets, and it's cut and come again. So every time I cut it down, just more kept growing and more blooms and it was, it's amazing. It's a fantastic plant. I left those hollow stems. Those are great for insects to nest in and lay eggs in in the spring, but everything else, I'm gonna grow it in a different part of the garden, but amaranth is a keeper. Things are looking quite different with the removal of all of that apple of Peru. And you can see um, there's one, two, three fruit trees here. There's some roses in the middle beds. So I also said I needed to winterize these roses. And the first step in that, building up a mound around the crown of the rose, like that. And this is just compost. And then what I will do is I'm gonna put the tomato cage around the rose and into the ground. Um, and I'll remove this in the spring but I will cover that tomato cage with burlap and fill it with dry leaves. And that will just protect those stems. And the advantage to doing this in part, I could just do this and that would be fine. And the rose will be just fine over the winter. But if I protect the stems a little bit, then I should have larger shrubs in the spring, which means more flowers. Another thing that needed to happen here was to take out this hollyhock. I actually love hollyhocks. They're pretty drought tolerant and the pollinators love them. But in this particular bed, it just got to be too big and too tall. And it reseeded all over the place. So it wasn't a good location. So I dug up as much of the root structure as I possibly could and then filled that hole back in with compost. So with a tenacious plant like hollyhock, I fully expect that next year I may have to dig it up again. Um, and what I won't do is let it get big. So in the spring, if I start to see something emerging there, I will pull it right away um, and go after it right away. And then hopefully that will keep this bed free of hollyhock but I'll make sure to plant a few in other parts of the garden. Okay, so I'm pretty windblown and it's been a good afternoon of work. The light is starting to fade, the sun's starting to set, you can see, but um, it's been a good day and I've accomplished a lot. So let me show you what I've done. We took down the chicken wire and I cut things down a little bit, left those stems, 
with the roses. Here are the roses and I put piles of compost over each rose bush and eventually we'll put up the tomato cages and all of that apple of Peru is cut back. So if you have any questions about what to do in your garden during the winter or questions about seeds or other plants, I'm always here for you. Be sure to like and subscribe and happy gardening.